Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is to look behind you in a chase. Like the amount of times on Twitch when I'm streaming and I'm spectating survivors, not looking behind them when they're getting chased by a killer, just hurts, you know? That's a different kind of pain. So yeah, analyzing a killer's movement, it is very important. Looking behind you, some people they don't know how to do that or they just don't they, they know how to do it but they cannot do it in a chase because they get too nervous and all that stuff um obviously the way i do it as you can see here is a little bit exaggerated but i'm comfortable with this and i've had a lot of people saying why do you shake your camera so much and all i'm going to say is that i like to know what is in front of me and what is behind me which is one of my reasons why i can loop killers for so long because I know what's behind me and I know what's in front of me but once you have mastered it and once you have been doing this like a long a long a long time um and you keep just you know practicing it against different type of killers different maps of course you will just get used to it and yes maybe you will still run into something but like very very unlikely it doesn't necessarily need to look like the way I do it like you know crazy like shaking my camera and you know knowing what's in front of me knowing what's behind me it doesn't need to look like that i mean as long as you look behind you like a few times in a chase that's more than enough i mean if you know what's in front of you if you know shack is in front of you you're running straight towards shack um yeah you can look behind you see if the killer is using power you might not make shack window you might not make shack door you might be able to juke it in a different way but yeah here is an example so looking behind you is necessary if you don't look behind you then you should probably not continue watching this guide because there's just no point otherwise. Um, anyways, now this is an interesting one because this one really depends on the killer. It depends on your team and it depends on your uh, surrounding. Um, knowing when to drop a god pallet. So Shaq, Kautri, any strong pallet that the killer basically needs to break. A pallet that the killer cannot bloodlust, that they have to get out of the way to, you know, continue chasing you. And it was the same thing against this blight where I dropped Shaq at 5 gens. And I've had also someone commenting on my video, why drop Shaq at 5 gens? I get it, yeah, like, you know, Shaq is gone at 5 gens, a god pallet, you know. But if you think about it, I'm in a map which is, you know, Ironworks. It's a really good Macmillan map. Um, I'm playing with a friend as well, so I know gens will get done. Let's say you're playing in a 4 stack. You can basically pre-drop every pallet without looping it, and all gens will get done because your team will do gens. But let's say you play solo queue. You cannot do that in solo queue. If you pre-drop every pallet in solo queue, regardless of how long you will loop the killer, <laughs> I think maximum 2 gens, 3 gens will pop. So the reason why I dropped Shaq at 5 gens against this blight is because I knew my surroundings. I know what I can play around with on this map. I know this is a strong map. Um, I know I have a teammate that's working on gens as well. So in this case, I dropped Shaq at 5 gens and I looped the blight for 5 gens. So it really isn't that deep. It all depends. But there is another thing that I want to talk about and that is um, the killer. Now, if you play against an Oni and it's 5 gens or 4 gens, um, you got out positioned the only pallet in front of you is Shaq. You will have to drop Shaq. Because if you think that Shaq pallet is more important than, you know, um, Oni's power, than Oni getting his power, you're crazy. You're actually crazy. Giving Oni power or a first hit, yeah, a first hit at 5-4 gens is insane. So yeah, depending on the killer, it also plays a huge role. So if you play against a trapper, for example, or a pig, you know, you can take a hit and, you know, run to another loop. Uh, and connect loops you know you can connect um you can connect shack with another loop and all that kind of stuff you know so but it depends on the killer the map the teammates that you play with and you know burning pallets quick on the map can you know be a problem for your team as well so here is a perfect example of me playing with my friends in a four stack against a oni who didn't have a single hit all game remember oni is a very unique killer without power Oni is arguably the weakest killer in the game. Yes, even Trapper is stronger than Oni. Without power, Oni is nothing but an M1 killer. Now we all know Trapper is an M1 killer as well, but at least Trapper can place traps, but Oni has nothing, like literally nothing. Now obviously I'm making a looping guide and the reason why I'm saying this is because don't be afraid, sometimes you need to drop a strong pallet against a certain killer. So you can save your team later on in the game from disaster. Literally. The best me, sub game I've had against an Oni was when I got a royalty in my game. Do you know him? A royalty, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got royalty in my game, bro. And like this man.
On me? One. Oh, we have another gen almost done? What the fuck? Bro, we have... We have like... Every gen almost done. Okay, um, deadlock on A, so I'm gonna go one. Okay, okay, I'm going three. So many pallets at one. I've yeah, I'm going back to one. Way. I'll just like be ready to leave. Nice. Can you not in on your gen, Gabri? Please, so I can pop one. I feel like it's more important, so Nosey can like stay at one the whole time, you know. That's okay. I'm still at one. Well, I can finish my gen probably. Dude, one is broken. Like, what is these pallets? Like, yeah, and then you got a fellow pallet like right next to the gen as well. That's actually insane. I love how we've almost done another two gens, but we got one gen left. So like two gens are 99 right now. Nice. Okay, you yeah, can use I that fellow pallet one as well. Yeah, yeah, you okay. Got okay. That there. Oh yeah, nice, nice. I mean, I could have. Uh, I mean, it's alright. It's okay. I can open four. Good, but it's like, like nice. he's not gonna I can literally wait till he gets... swings and then drop the pallet. That's how good the ping is. Like, he literally swings through the pallet and I drop the pallet. Where's the other gate? Yeah, There's one at one. Oh, four. Okay, okay, just, I'm heading there. Just take there. a hit and run for you. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm running four. I might, I might not get hit, actually. I have hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There is a, this is a no-hit game, I think. Oh. Okay. Aye, aye, aye. That sucks. I feel it. That's the oh. only issue with Oni is like, uh, he struggles to get hit. He had fast penance on Oni? The next thing I want to talk about is walking in a chase. And that is really good if you're running exhaustion perks. I mean, you should be running exhaustion perks. They are really good. So to show it to you in an easier way, I have an example here against Spirit where I was running fixated and sprint burst. I'm trying to like walk as much as possible. In the beginning, I didn't really care much because I just wanted to get her on me. But then when I saw that she was like a bit lost and confused, I was like, I'm just gonna take the advantage to, you know, walk. As well as I can recover from my exhaustion and I might as well use it twice in one chase, which I actually, spoilers alert, did do against the spirit. Of course, don't do it too much. I mean, you can do it a lot, but you have to know where you're gonna run next. So it is very important to also know, like, do I have a pallet nearby or a window or anything that I can play around with after I can, you know, after I walk for a little bit and then start running again. Um, it is very important to know the distance between you and the killer. So yeah, that is one thing that you have to keep in mind. And actually, remember when I told you um, about the blight where um, you don't have to be afraid in dropping pallets? In this case, it's the exact same thing. I was playing with one friend of mine. I know that one friend of mine will always be on gents if I'm getting chased. So for me, there was no reason to greet pallets and play unsafe against a spirit. So I could play it safe, drop pallets, as well as, you know, walk in loops, recover from my exhaustion, and the game turned out in a 4 escape. Dead zones or finding yourself completely zoned by a killer. Now let's say you're very unlucky, uh, you got out positioned, you're on the edge of the map, uh, the killer has lethal, it's a billy. If you see a Z wall at the edge of the map, which you will see them a lot, in this case um, in Coldwind you see a lot of U walls, I guess U walls maybe, but in this case a U wall or Z wall becomes your best friend. Play with that Z wall like it's your best friend. That's all I'm going to say. Because what you want to do in these situations is you want to force a killer to hit you with their M1 weapon. So you will keep playing around with a Z wall or U wall to force a M1 on a killer so you can take distance to another pallet or another window. And to be honest, it doesn't even need to be a Z wall. It can be a tree, it can be a bush, it can be a car, it can be anything. As long as if you have something, it is just way better than just being in the open, right? Now, the edge of the map is also very notorious against killers like Nurse. Um, I have many, many clips of me, you know, looping, I guess looping, uh, running Nurse on the edge of the map because the edge of the map is so far away from everything. It is so much more difficult uh, as a nurse to blink on the edge of the map because there is a lot of spots on the edge of the map where her blink gets sucked in because she's on the edge of the map, obviously. So it's your job to try and run the killer as long as possible to give your team time to do gents. 
chaining loops or connecting loops or connecting windows with pallets or whatever you want to call it is really really strong i did upload a few days ago a game against the oni where i basically just used three pallets for five gens so i used one pallet in the beginning then i had a window in front of me then i had shack in front of me and then i had a jungle gym in that video i only had like 25% of the map where I looped the Oni for 5 gens. And that is all because I was connecting loops. So for those who don't know what connecting loops is, let's say you're getting chased by the killer. Let's say you have a pallet next to you and the killer is like pretty far away. You don't have to use that pallet. You can just run to the next pallet or window uh, and use that and maybe go back to that pallet and then so on. So you keep chaining loops as long as possible. Uh, in that case, you save a lot of resources for your team. Um, and it makes it a lot more frustrating for the killer. It is very, very effective. It is very satisfying if you do get a nice um, setup as well. Most decent killers will see if a loop or setup is broken. So they will probably leave you. But if they don't leave you, sometimes you can run them for 10 generators. It is actually insane. So chaining loops is really, really strong. And if you want to see a really, really nice example with in-depth explanation, I have a video right here. So if you want to check that out as well, feel free and yeah be unpredictable now against nurse we all know that the best way to counter a nurse is lose line of sight and be as unpredictable as possible with your movement but that does not only apply to nurse that applies to every single killer so sometimes you will have to mix up your movement um to play in a different way and you know make it a lot more difficult for a killer to catch you or uh, read your movement it is very interesting because if you do look behind you if you are connecting loops if you know how to take certain loops or approach certain loops um you should know in the back of your head this killer knows that i'm a good looper this killer knows how i'm playing so he will try adapt to this play style and if you see that they are adapting to that play style or you know changing game plan then you have to change it again so it is very very it is very very weird but that is that is how you have to be super unpredictable so sometimes you have to change your way of playing just to end up winning and dead by daylight there is a lot of 50 50s and that's where you have to be patient now patience is really really important in dead by daylight when it comes to looping as well especially when you're looping a good killer who's trying to control your mind games now i know this sounds weird but being patient is a very difficult skill to learn and i can kind of see why because you cannot always tell what the killer's next move is going to be it's basically like uh don't let them know your next move so i have a few examples in a chase um when you're being patient uh patience can win you chases can win you games so to explain it in short if you're getting chased try to be more careful try to take your time and read the killer's next move um and that happens a lot when you're in a unsafe pallet and for example like uh right here but when a killer sees you at a unsafe pallet they expect you to panic and drop the pallet because the pallet is really bad um but what you have to do is the complete opposite you just have to take your time wait and wait till the killer swings i know reaction time plays a role as well but this is way more effective than just dropping the unsafe pallet because then you're in even more trouble so patience is really important of course since we're looping efficient I want to talk about hugging loops obstacles tiles now this is a very basic one but i see that a lot of people still struggle with this and i know the reason why they do struggle with it because it also has to do with the sensitivity and especially if you play on controller um if you switch up your sensitivity a lot um if you switch up your sensitivity a lot uh, and you play around it a lot if you do end up looping or you try to end up looping efficient you will find yourself a lot stuck like, you know, running against the wall, uh, getting stuck on the wall, and all that kind of stuff. I'm not talking about getting stuck on obstacles. I'm talking about getting stuck because you're taking the loop too tight. And I think a lot of people know what I'm talking about. To prevent this, you have to play on a sensitivity where you feel really comfortable with. In my case, I play a lot on 90, and I just keep playing on 90 for everything. Like, 90 is my main sensitivity. I can put it on 100, but I feel great on 90, so why would I change it? So talking about looping efficient, what I'm trying to say is that you're hugging every obstacle tight. And by doing so, you will get the most out of every loop. So if you don't do it, uh, if you just loop without hugging the obstacle, the chance of you looping it multiple times is very low because you lose a lot of distance. So hugging a loop 
will let you get the most out of it. So yeah, when it comes to looping obstacles, it is just very simple. It is, you know, looping tight and trying to get the most out of every loop. Now, don't get too greedy once again. If you see the killer is a little bit far, but you know that they're about to gain bloodlust, I would just drop the pallet if I was you, or I would, you know, vote that window, you know, try to play as efficient as possible, but know your limits. So yeah, that's pretty much that. I just wanted to make another guide because I know that there is a lot of new players coming in on my channel. And of course, there is still a lot of people that want to know how to play in a certain way, how to become a better uh, survivor, how to improve and chase. So that's the point of all these guides. Um, I'm happy to help you all out. And I really hope you enjoyed the video and it was helpful. I do have many guides on my channel. So if you're new, take a look on my channel. I do have a bunch of guides from how to loop to how to use flashlights, to tags, to 360, moonwalking, all on controller. So if you want to check that out as well, uh, feel free. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.